Hello again, I'm Matthew from thewetpen.com, and this is the second video in a little series about fountain pen inks from India. And today we're looking at an ink brand called Brill. Brill is probably one of the two most common inks in India these days, along with the Camlin Camel inks, and it's been on the market since 1964. A lot of Indians around my age will associate Brill inks with their school days. Brill specializes in inks, but also in other school craft supplies. Glues and paints and scissors and that sort of thing. If you've ever used these inks, or the Camlin for that matter, let me know down in the comments section. I'm curious about when and where. If we take a look at the side of the box here, first you'll see the price of the ink has been blacked out. Apparently, the eBay seller that I bought this one from thought that he was pulling one over on me, selling this bottle for $8. So here's another box. And we see that the price is just like the Camel ink, at 25 Indian rupees, or 30 or 40 cents in US dollars. Incidentally, I bought most of these bottles of ink from penhouse.in, where prices are actually even less for some of these inks. Penhouse does ship to the US, and unlike most Indian websites, they charge the same prices whether you're ordering from within India or from outside. But the shipping charges are pretty hefty, so it doesn't make sense to just order a few bottles of ink. Anyway, on the side of the box, they list the eight colors of ink that the company makes. And I have all of them to show you except for the red, and the Laurel Rose, which are both pinkish and didn't really interest me, and the Blue Black, which I just couldn't find. We see that this ink is the Writer's Delight, free flowing and quick drying. And on the other side of the box, we see the debatable claim that fountain pens help improve handwriting. Probably true for most people, I guess. On the top of the box, we see that the company recently celebrated their Golden Jubilee, that would have been in 2014. Unlike Camlin, Brill has not switched to plastic bottles, and they use these thin aluminum caps on which the threads get stripped pretty easily, unfortunately. So you need to be gentle with them. Here we see the full company name, Brill Industrial Research, which makes them sound like a big chemical company or something that spills toxic gas into the streets of Bhopal, but they actually just make ink and glue sticks and office supplies. Anyway, here we see the same price as of May 2022 when this bottle was packaged. And if there was any doubt, these bottles are made specifically for Brill and are marked on the bottom. Well, let's take a look at these inks, shall we? But first, take a second to like this video and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. The most interesting Indian inks and pens are still to come. To begin with, this is the Royal Blue, which I will swatch on a few papers. I will go with the Clairefontaine, the Tomoe River, and Midori. Ah, oh, nice. This ink looks like a nice medium blue, leaning just slightly towards purple. It looks pretty vibrant at first, but I can already see that it's starting to fade a bit as it dries. And here it is, all dry and it has turned into a pretty standard blue ink. Not especially vibrant or anything, but a good functional blue. There's a little bit of red sheen in the heaviest areas, but I've never seen that appear when I write with it. Let's see how it compares to the Camlin Royal Blue from last week's video. Here again, I'm using Rhodia paper. The Camlin is definitely the more vibrant blue here, 
While the thinner half of the brill fades down to a pretty dusty pale blue, the camlin remains a nice vibrant blue all around. Now I'll open up the bottle of green ink and swatch it on the same three papers. And this is not as much of a grass green as I had expected. I'd call this more of a greenish turquoise, but it's a pretty color. I should mention that this ink has a pretty strong odor. It's a sharp, cough syrupy smell. I didn't notice anything like it with the royal blue. Now that it's dry, let me show you a couple of inks that I think are in the same color range. Pen BBS 507 is a little bit bluer, but not far off. And this Lamy Tourmaline is even bluer. This Organics Studio, Frank L. Baum, is actually very close, although this particular swatch is darker. And this Monteverde 2019 Super Show Teal is also really similar, but more saturated. And the Emerald Green is in the ballpark, but yellower. This makes me wonder what the turquoise blue is going to look like, so let's take a look at that next. Again, these are the three same papers. Okay, this ink has the medicine-y smell too, and it is quite a bit more blue than I expected. It's basically a Konpeki blue, or just a bit greener. This one is producing a bit of magenta sheen, especially on the Midori paper, and it's staying pretty vibrant as it dries. So this isn't an especially unique color, but it is one of my favorites. I have a bunch of inks in this range. Here's Birmingham Electron. Here's Athens Blue from Backpack Ink. Birmingham Angelfish. Blackstone Barrier Reef. FPR Royal Flush. And of course, Pilot Konpeki. Pen BBS 512 is not far off, and Birmingham Polar Bear is just a bit greener. Now, let me move on to Brill Violet. I bought this bottle of violet ink primarily because I had seen some sample photos online that showed it to be more of a blue that leaned a little purple. But the photos must not have been color corrected. This definitely looks like a purple that leans a little bit blue. We are getting some cool sheen on this ink. It's a golden green color, which is not uncommon in purple inks. It actually reminds me of a Lamy crystal ink, Lamy azurite, although it's bluer. Schaefer Scrip purple is similar and has just a bit of the same sheen. Diamine violet is not too far off and Krishna Overcast Deep Lilac is similar to the Diamine, not really as blue as the Brill. Birmingham Pop Art Purple is bluer though, and this Troublemaker really isn't very close now that I look at it again. Okay, and finally that brings us to the black. The black has the same sharp smell as some of the others. It seems pretty dark, although it does gray down as it dries.
Let's see how Brill compares to a few other black inks, including Noodler's Black, Pilot Namiki Black, and Camelin Black. I'd say that the Brill is most similar to the Camlin, while the Pilot is quite a bit darker, and the Noodler's is warmer toned, and it's a bit streaky. It seems a little more like paint somehow. And again, here's the Brill black on the left, and the Camlin black on the right. And to wrap this up, I just want to see how the Brill Black compares to the Camlin Permanent Black when it comes to water resistance. This is Rhodia paper again, and I'll just dip it in some water. And again, we see that the ink runs off both of them pretty heavily. But after a little more time in the water, the Brill has actually done a good job of sticking to the paper, and it's still pretty easy to read. Well, all of these inks do dry nice and quickly, and I really like the color of the turquoise blue, especially on good paper, and the green is sort of nice too. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't go out of my way to track down any of these inks again, but they're all perfectly good if you happen to run across them in a shop in India, especially for the price. These videos have been getting pretty long recently, so my next one is going to be pretty quick, and then I'll get to some really cool inks, I hope. If you like this sort of thing, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you back here next time with a new video about fountain pen ink. In the meantime, enjoy your pens and inks out there, everyone. See you next time.